Well, I wrote, I, I wrote this poem. Um, did anyone see my last marble as it rolled out and over the floor? It fell through a hole in the corner of a room in a town on a tour. And, and I had this rhythm, which was like, a, really like a, an a Irish drinking song rhythm. Has anyone seen my last marble as it rolled out and over the floor? It fell through a hole in the corner of a room in a town on a tour. You know, that kind of... Um, that kind of rhythm, it probably has a name, you know, iambic multi-metric uh, hexameter or something. Uh, a proper poet would know what the name of, of that rhythm is. But, um, it started out like that, and it, it was a goofy little poem about going nuts. Um, but at the same time as it was about going nuts, it was it was it, it was about uh, innocence and. Uh, harking back to a time when everything was real, you know, when, when I was a kid and I used to play marbles and how magical they were and the fact that to me that they, they, they almost represented little spirits frozen in, in, in glass and like a, a, a way of, of capturing ghosts almost when I was a kid. And we used to play, me and my mate John Laydell, John Liedel from up the street. We would play every day in the summer. Um, and if you won, of course, then you'd end up with more marbles than you started up with. So the more marbles you had, the, the, the greater became your general standing in, on the estate. And uh, I ended up with hundreds of them. I had this great big bag of marbles. Um, and um, so I was very proud of the fact that I got so many. And it meant that you'd got plenty to lose as well. If you lost a few, it wasn't such a disaster. But then you'd always have the special ones that you wouldn't play with because you couldn't cope with the idea of losing them uh, because they were the ones that you'd decided for whatever reason were, were more, more beautiful or more precious in some way than, than the others. Um, and they used to have those inside a bag within the bag so as not to get them mixed up. Um, and then one sunny afternoon, uh, John and I were sitting in, in, in our back garden and, and we discovered that it, if you, we'd been playing tennis, and we discovered that if you hit marbles on the tennis racket, they do something else entirely. They just zing away into the sky like bullets, uh, so high that they vanish. Um, and so we spent most of the afternoon just taking them, walloping these things into the air. Uh, not really thinking about where they were coming down, of course, or not, not even really thinking that they'd come down at all. Uh, and of course, they were coming down all over this housing estate, and they were going through people's glass houses, you know, the greenhouses where they grow their crops, and tomatoes and stuff. Working class people like growing tomatoes for some reason that I've never quite got my head around. But uh, I think it's just a way of blokes getting away from the missus. You know, it's 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 it's, a, it's a just if I'll just go and have a look at the tomatoes, dear. Um, so everybody used to have a greenhouse, and everyone had tomatoes on the go. And of course, these marbles were going down through all the greenhouses on the estate like bullets, and smashing all the glass, and going down through people's roof tiles and killing their cats and whatnot. Um, so this caused a lot of trouble, and and. Before I knew it, there was a queue of people at the front door, uh, you know, waving fists angrily uh, and demanding payment for new, for new glazing uh, from my father. And we weren't really very terribly well off, so th this represented quite, quite a substantial uh, debt that I'd suddenly plunged my dad into. And um, it, it, in order to punish me, it, it, um, he gave all my marbles away to this other kid who lived up the street, who I didn't really like. Um, which was a, a massive, massive blow. Um, and I was utterly devastated. Because I, I didn't really feel that I'd done anything bad, you know. I, I mean, it was naive, but... There's a difference between naivety and, and willful, willful evil doing. Um, but he, 
you know, he was in a bit of a temper because it had cost a lot of money, and he gave he gave my marbles away. And and I I, I never forgave him until I was about forty, um, and it, it became a standing joke between us. You know, I hadn't forgotten him giving my marbles away, and he he actually bought me some marbles one one Christmas, not that long ago, um, to make amends. It was a little little token gesture. Um, and of course I lost him a couple of years ago he, he, he died a couple of years back and so I suppose I, I, that whole episode t took on a slightly more you know a, a deeper and more poignant sort, sort of beauty when, when, when remembered really um, and so it's, it's not surprising that that song came out really at this at this at this point and um, at the time I was writing as well the Iraq war was all going off and uh, which was so wrong you know and uh, how one country or one part of the world can decide to, to drop fire on another country when when that country doesn't pose any threat to it um, just because it decides it should um, seemed seemed terrible to me and it was like the world had gone completely nuts and so I was beginning to wonder if the world had gone mad or if I had and and so marbles is a metaphor for innocence and for youth and for a time when everything was real kids, kids play with computer games now they don't play with real things um, and and this I guess it's just a different kind of magic, isn't it, that they have going on now. They have that virtual thing and they probably uh, project their, their imagination into that, whereas we just had bits of glass you know, when I was a kid.